Yellowstone volcano quake swarms at northwest of the caldera and Yellowstone Lake. It's near the magnitude 7.3 1959 quake of Hebgen Lake. It's basically right to the left, to the west of Maple Creek, as you saw there. And this is the basic area where we're seeing the quake swarms happening and also the area of the Montana bigger quakes that we have that many a time are not included in the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory quakes. I suppose it's because they're outside of the park limits, but they are still considered Yellowstone supervolcano quakes. They've been taking place for a number of years, and uh, these are the areas of the current quake swarms. Hebgen Lake, as we know, is to the northwest of the caldera, as you'll see on the maps. This is where the 1959 7.3 magnitude quake took place. They were so strong it even subsided a part of the park, a part of the area, and made a new lake called Quake Lake. Now, regular earthquakes are bad enough in this area, but the earthquake swarms at a supervolcano are something that really sound bad. It could be scary, and scientists say they've just detected a phenomenon at the site of the Yellowstone caldera, according to the USGS geologist, Yellowstone supervolcano shaken by swarms of hundreds of earthquakes, accompanied by innumerable smaller tremors, too faint to accurately record. Despite how alarming all this cavalcade of seismic activity might seem, considering its unnerving proximity to one of nature's most devastating supervolcanoes, a sleeping giant, a Godzilla, as uh, Dr. Michio Kaku calls it, scientists say that we should not panic. Researchers Mike Poland and Jamie Farrell from Millstone Volcano Observatory explain in USGS updates that swarms like this account for more than half of the seismic activity at Yellowstone and they've never actually been known to contribute to volcanic activity at the caldera. Poland told Live Science, this is what Yellowstone does. This is Yellowstone being Yellowstone. It experiences swarms all the time. Now, what happened was, last June, regional experienced epic, uh, the region experienced epic earthquake swarms that was 10 times more turbulent, breaking Yellowstone records on its way to ultimately producing almost 2,500 quakes by September. Also, we saw a, a, a tremendous change in uh, the Norris Geyser Basin in that steamboat geyser started erupting in March. It had over 30 eruptions. We've already surpassed that record this year. Now, ordinarily, the caldera sees 1,500 to 2,000 earthquakes per year with about half taking place during the swarms. And in these swarms, the latest, the largest earthquake reached a 2.9 on the Richter scale, whereas there have been quakes that topped 4.4. Now, we also had, the beginning of April, the uh, earthquake that was downgraded to a 4.4, and uh, no one explained to us what that meant because that was a quite a big event. Even though it was in Montana, it's still part of the Yellowstone supervolcano system. Just because it's outside park boundaries doesn't mean it should be ignored. Now, these events might not produce fiery eruptions from Yellowstone's expansive magma chambers, but there's still uh, an opportunity for scientists to study the behavior of the caldera system. The latest Outbreak took place in an area around 13 kilometers northwest of West Yellowstone, Montana, close to last year's two and a half strong swarm. The researchers say it's possible that new flare ups 
is actually a continuation of uh, what happened in 2017. It might seem like a long stretch, but on the vast time scale over which seismic activity plays out, it's actually just a blip. The researchers even say that both the 2017 and 18 swarms may actually hark back to a quake from previous century. That is, the 1959 quake that took place in Hebgen Lake. One of the potential explanations for why this area is so swarmy is that the whole crust in the area is still adjusting to that big quake 7.5 magnitude of 1959, because as we see, most of these swarms are in that area. This is what Mike Poland explained in Live Science. That episode included the surrounding landscape to plummet several meters, uh, provoked uh, standing waves on Hebgen Lake for 12 hours, was the largest historic earthquake in the region, and it even uh, caused a landslide, causing the Quake Lake. The 7.3 to 7.5 magnitude earthquake was due to stresses along faults under the region, but Yellowstone is also susceptible to pressure changes beneath the surface due to the buildup and the withdrawal of fluids like magma and also the hydrothermal water, plus the volcanic gases that build up as well. And now, for now, there's no indication that there, these suspected after effects are actually a sign of any impending bigger seismic event to come, nor is it a prelude to an eruption. But if or when a volcanic outburst is next unleashed at Yellowstone, it likely will not be a super eruption, caldera forming eruption, a cataclysm many fear. This is what the geologists say. Quote, if Yellowstone erupts, it's most likely to be a lava flow, as occurred in nearly all the 80 eruptions since the last super eruption took place 640,000 years ago. This is what Jamie Farrell told Newsweek. A lava flow would be a big deal at Yellowstone, but would have very little regional or continental effect. Of course, it's just likelihood being talked about there, one year or another, although it could be countless millennia away, the supervolcano will inevitably be, do, uh, will erupt. Uh, one, another of it is incredibly rare, but the catastrophic, the catastrophic caldera forming super eruptions. To give you an idea of how bad, and hopefully it'll, it'll be very far off, an explosion of that would, a magnitude would be, NASA estimates the global consequences could be graver than a planet devastating asteroid strike with ash clouds likely to starve Earth of sunlight in a choking years-long volcanic winter. But the good news is that that's probably not what this earthquake swarm is all about. So we can be thankful right now that Yellowstone is being sleepy, especially since when even while it's napping, it remains a bizarre and mystical, mysterious, unpredictable place. It turns deadly and surprising and confounding. As long as it's not a super eruption, uh, we'll take what we can get. And in any case, the latest swarms look like it could be over for now. It's just the aftershocks that they were expecting for the 1959 Hebgen Lake of 7.3. They didn't have enough in the past, they say, and uh, they're now playing out. And uh, it's, ex it's what is expected. And here you have, on the right, where it says Grayling, that's an area, uh, that black spot there is the, uh, west, the eastern part of Hebgen Lake. And you have various um, resorts there, right on the lake. If you see the videos just before this one, we did include the latest research on what uh, the water contains there. The geysers emptying into the streams have been found to contain high levels of mercury and they're of geothermal origin. The mercury is from geothermal origin emptying into the rivers as we can see here on the map that empty into Hebgen Lake and also deposited in the sediments 
and found in the fish, in the trout, that many people fish and uh, consume, of course, from the Yellowstone area.